Hi everyone, welcome back for this lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned about Web 1 and Web 2, and we said that Web 2 was more dynamic than Web 1. Actually, Web 2 was dynamic and Web 1 was all static. So, with Web 2, we said that we can communicate with the internet, we can upload content, and then we can consume that content. So basically, we are learning from the internet, and at the same time, we are teaching to the internet. So, even though we discussed this, I didn't lie to you, by the way, but I just hide it as truth. So in this lesson, we are going to learn what I hide in the previous lesson. So what I hide was named middleman. So let's look at this middleman and understand what it is exactly. So again, if you remember, we had our website here. And the website, we had our post. So you can think of this website as Instagram. We have a profile picture here, like our buttons and everything. So let's call this Instagram. And we have Jackie here. Now Jackie has a hat. Now we have Instagram on the left side and we have Jackie on the right side. And we said that. Jackie is consuming content here and also uploading content. And we said that our information flow from Instagram to Jackie and again Jackie to Instagram. All right, so this was what we discussed in the previous lesson. But actually, we are hiding here. So let's see what we are hiding. So the problem here is that I got a bit of Jackie's hat. Okay. So the problem here is that we cannot directly communicate with the internet. We need some middleman. So for Instagram, what we are doing is when we want to log in or upload something, then we cannot go directly to Instagram, but first we go to a Facebook server. Since we are having our example from the Instagram, I use the Facebook server here. Let's say this is our server. So Jackie first communicates with the Facebook server, then through the Facebook server, we are communicating with the Instagram. It's very important here because in a little bit, we are going to see how this middleman is powerful. Okay, now we have Jackie communicating with Instagram, but we said that we need a Facebook server here to communicate with the Instagram. Let's say Facebook server. All right. And then to consume the content, we cannot directly get it from the Instagram. We can get it, this information, through the Facebook server. If you are looking for some stories, for some posts, comments, or any information, now we have threads. So for any information, we get it from the Facebook server. So we also have this one. Here, we can see that between our information flow, we have this Facebook server. First of all, it's very convenient because these servers are very hard to maintain and they need to be secure as a software wise and also as a hardware wise. So Facebook is doing a lot for us actually by providing this server and also securing this server. They have all the maintenance people, they have software developers. If something wrong, they immediately fix it so we have all these things that are being done for us. But the question comes to mind, why is Facebook doing this since we are not paying to Instagram? So the answer is that by being this middleman here, we have a very powerful tool. Okay, let's see what power we have. So since to sign up for Instagram, we share some information. And with every information we are uploading to Instagram, through the middleman, we can have a actually little profile. So let's see that profile here. Let's say we say name, Jackie, hobbies, let's say hats, since we got a hat recently, and we have age. I don't know, like we have many more information, location relationship, 
what time she shops, what she shops, when she does it, where she goes. So we have that many information here. Since Facebook is not making money through here, what they are doing is they have this information. And through this information, they can sell this information to the advertisers. So we are selling this. We have our advertiser company. As you can see from their hands, they are really happy to get this information. And this make them free because they're actually a lot. And they get this information. And again, they sell products here on Instagram. I think everyone heard the word uh, personalized experience. So we are doing this because we want to personalize the experience for you and stuff. All right. Even though it looks good and it benefits us, let's look at the other side for a little while. So since they know a lot about Jackie, they can show an ad in the exact time Jackie shops in general. So let's say that Jackie comes from a holiday or Jackie is going to go for a holiday. She's really high for it. She's in the Instagram. It's 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Perfect time for Jackie's shopping. And then we have our ad here. So pool, hats, 50% off. Jackie saw this. Maybe she likes it, maybe not. But in general, if this wasn't profitable, then they wouldn't do it. So what we do is we actually buy. It. So we buy stuff that we don't need it. And we accumulate it because it's 50% off, because it's the perfect timing for us to buy and everything. Since they have our information, it's easier to sell stuff for us. So through this, Facebook made money selling this to advertisers, let's say sold. And then advertisers made money because we bought the hat. And what happened is we actually lost money. but. We were using Instagram for free. So we are not directly paying for Instagram, but we are actually being a little bit manipulated in this sense so that we can buy stuff. So is it all bad? No, again, half good and half bad because we can find stuff more easily and we can buy them for cheaper. So it's more convenient. But at the same time, it's very hard to resist for the things that we love and to buy them. So this is just uh, one example how this middleman creating a problem. So these are just the couple of information that we are giving and then they are collecting even more with the terms and conditions and everything. Actually, Jackie here, she doesn't know about this process because Jackie has other jobs. Jackie is a student. Jackie bakes cakes. We don't know, but Jackie is busy so she cannot directly go into this, look for this stuff. And in the bigger picture, Jackie is actually paying money to Instagram and Instagram is giving Jackie stuff for paying money. When we look at this, we can see that that's a little bit different in this case. So this is just one example. Our information can be sold for marketers and this is one of the biggest and hottest topics nowadays. So since we are actually giving our data, it's the big tech company's responsibility. In this case, Facebook, every big tech company actually having our information. I'm not saying they are selling all our information, but I'm saying they all have our information. So what can happen is that first they need to secure this information. So they are doing a really good job about it, but since they have many information, it becomes a little bit harder to actually secure this information and they become a hot place for hackers. From the previous years, as we saw that many big tech companies had problems about the breaches like Sony had with PlayStation, where they actually breach with like around 40 million people's information came out, even the credit cards and stuff. So that was a whole mess. And then Facebook had attacks and we generally have this problem. There's an ongoing battle on the background. So we may lose our information through this breach. So that's the first problem. And the second problem is that actually by personalizing our experience, they are giving content that we would like. And since we would like the content, we get it more and we get it more so that we are hooked and we are actually more in this application or website or whatever we are using on the web too. And also, as you can see, since we have this server in between, what we can upload it goes through the policy of the server. And what we can see again goes through this policy of the server or company. 
So what we can have is we can have censorship, we can have filtration. So actually we don't have a free internet here. We need to give our personal data to interact with the internet and then to get back data from the internet, we can only get back what is willing from server to show us. So this whole control creates this couple of problems and as it gets more and more bigger and more applications come out, the more busy we are, bigger terms and conditions with every year, every iteration and every law, actually it's getting more restricting and more troublesome. So because of this reason, there's a need so that we can actually interact with the internet with eliminating this middleman so that we can communicate with internet as we like without giving our information or without being censored or filtered by the server or without buying anything in return as shopping. So in our next lesson, we are going to see how blockchain is addressing this problem and how we can solve this problem in a general sense. So thank you very much for sticking with me on this video and I will see you on the next one.